everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's going to be this month's rankings video where I rank all the things that I tried in the month before. I, like, I ranked my last month's haul from fail to holy grail, letting you know what I think about all of these things and there's a lot of things here, not only actually things from the last month's haul but also a couple of things that have been like left behind on the back burner but I'm doing a collective review of all of them here so it's actually going to be quite a lot of reviews in this video so if you're interested in hearing my thoughts about some of these brand new products and some oldies but goodies do stay tuned and if this is your first video here hello my name is Angie I'm such a lover of beauty makeup love everything beauty makeup related well, you will see that in this video I love playing with makeup love finding new favorites also love finding old favorites love reviewing makeup for you I review everything so you don't have to so if you want to see some more makeup content on the timeline if you want to see some more color in the timeline because this this makeup look is very much up my alley I love playing with color don't forget to subscribe because I upload five videos a week although I will say this week there is a couple of bonus videos that happens sometimes but it's a lot of content pretty sure this video is going up as a bonus content because I had a lot of things that I wanted to do this week and I, just, I love filming I love YouTube that's why I do this I love YouTube <laughs> I wanted to get some bonus things up and I wanted to get this video up to you a little bit quicker than um, in the middle of the... <laughs> listen, listen, I'm trying here. I did film this look, it should already be live on my channel. It is with the new Beauty Bay Age of Opulence palette. This is going to be in la uh, next month's haul. We are going to start at the absolute bottom from the fails to holy grails and usually I don't have that many fails but actually <laughs> in this video I do have some fails. And there's quite a lot of makeup here. So we are just going to start at the bottom and we're going to work our way to the top. Some of these things I have been using for more than one month just because I didn't know what I really thought about them. So let's start at the absolute bottom. This is the thing that I like the least. It's a concealer. This is the Sephora Best Skin Ever. Why you lying? Because this is the worst skin ever. Although I do understand that they didn't name it that because it doesn't really have the same ring to it as best skin ever but high coverage concealer natural finish it looked absolutely atrocious under my uh, under my eyes if you also did not like the Tarte ultra creamy concealer I know some of you love that concealer this looked the exact same under my eyes as the Tarte ultra creamy concealer it looked cakey and and just made me look older like yeah the absolutely despise this one. Uh, I've tried to use it a couple of times since, still don't love it. I don't think that this is a good concealer. I've heard some people, other people love it and that's the whole thing about like makeup. It's all about preferences. I am 37. I was like, how old am I? I'm 37. I'm 30, 38 in not that long and I have quite like a lot of fine lines under my eyes. I do have pretty normal skin though. I'm not dry. I'm not oily. This one just didn't jive with my somewhat textured under eyes. It didn't work at all for me. So this is a, this is a, definitely a pass. Another thing that I really did not like and that is these... It was actually... I had a lot of things that I didn't like that I could have put at the bottom. But this is the Colourpop and the Powerpuff Girls... Um, what are these called? The, 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 the cream shadow sticks. I don't like these at all. I've heard some people say that these work better in the waterline. I think that these are patchy. Uh, I don't think that these work on their own and I also don't think that you can buff these either with your finger or with a brush. For me these shimmery ones did not work in the waterline. Uh, they are not really that good of a base on it for a colored eyeshadow either. So it's like I don't see the purpose with these. They don't fill any kind of void in my collection or in my makeup application. I just don't think that these are pretty on their own, which is what I think that these crayon, like eyeshadow crayons should be used as. I don't think that they, I didn't like them. I didn't like them. I think it was a mess. Should I say like, I bought this one myself and the Colourpop things I was sent in PR. This thing I also bought myself. These are products from Tower 28. It's the bronzer and it's the blush and I don't like either of them. I'm actually wearing the blush today, but it, okay. The reason why I don't like this, it's not how it applies. It is not how it looks. It's how it feels. These do not dry down. I had to go over still feeling a little bit tacky which is weird but I went over this one with a powder blush. I will leave a pinned comment uh, with the items that are on my face right now. I will also leave a link in the pinned comment to where this tutorial is if you're interested in watching it. 
these are tacky and they stay tacky and that drives me bonkers i don't mind if things not 100 percent sets down i don't mind that uh, some of the anastasia products that i reviewed last month i ranked them really high they also do not 100 percent set like they are not transfer proof but they are not tacky like your hair doesn't stick to them they are creamy but not in a sticky way these are creamy in a sticky way and i don't like it i don't like how these feel and my hair sticks to them i just feel like i'm like i said i feel like they're fly paper makeup like i could catch bugs with that makeup if you're the kind of person that has very dry skin and you need something like this i totally understand why people would love it but for me with a normal skin i absolutely did not like the feeling of those on my skin big pass okay i actually i dislike all of these things i seen from me. this is this is hard okay this is hard okay i'm gonna actually put this because here again we're getting into preference territory but this one i actually don't okay don't cancel me don't unsubscribe be nice to me but i honestly think that this powder from shoulder silvery is a little bit overhyped I bought this powder because I thought it was gonna work like my NYX pressed banana powder does under my skin. I want it to be this color. This is in medium, and when I set this under my eyes, I want this to be this color. It has a little bit of coverage, but this darkens up to be even darker than my skin. So it deepens up like three, four shades when it comes in contact with concealer. So I can't use this under my eyes because it deepens up the concealer so that the concealer becomes darker than my skin tone which makes no sense because it becomes darker than the powder is here so i i can't use this to set my concealer with it which is how i like to use powders like this so for me this is an absolute no-go under my eyes i did use it on my skin today though and it works really good like to buff around my skin but i don't think that this is I'm sorry, I just don't see the hype with this. This darkens up on me and I just, I don't see the hype. I'm sorry, don't cancel me. I just don't, there's a lot of things from Charlotte Tilbury that is amazing and you're gonna see this in this ranking because I have a bunch of Charlotte Tilbury in this video. That product, I just don't see it. I feel the same about this one. This is the Eye Sculpt Eye Shade Brow Pen. This doesn't work as good as other products. This is very affordable though. And if you wanted to try a product like this, this is a brush tip applicator. It's one of those that you draw in hairs with it. I don't think that this is as good as the next one though. I will link that in the pinned comment because I'm using that today. I think that this one is too sheer to be to that good. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, this isn't uh, precise and, sh and like pigmented enough to actually emulate a hair but if you just wanted something to just do some strokes and just get a, a shade in your brow and just i don't know thicken them up a bit i this i don't like this as much as i like the, the next one i'm gonna be honest i think that this is just not as good it's not as pigmented it doesn't give the same result just go with the next one i think the next one is better speaking of nyx i don't like the reformulation of the lingerie lippies xxl i don't like this first of all i don't know why they went with this like plastic packaging to show the color when it's not showing the color like this is not the color of the lippy and it's driving me a little crazy like if you're gonna do a packaging that's the shade of the makeup make sure it's the shade of the makeup if you can't do that just make it see-through the old lip lingeries were see-through it made a lot more sense i do like the color though but this is very very drying and i I actually prefer the old formula. People said that that one was drying, but I think this is one is more drying. I don't love this formula. I won't be buying any more shades. Okay, this is the one where it's preference. I don't think that this is a bad product, but it's not for me. And I want to like explain why I don't think it's for me because this is the Glossier Skin Tint. I think it's called Perfecting Skin Tint. I love it sheer or light coverage foundations i love skin tints today i'm actually mixing two of the foundations that i'm going to be talking about in a bit i like all kinds of coverage but this one is so sheer that it's basically nothing and for me i don't use makeup as like something to make myself presentable i'm already presentable i hate the idea that women have to put something on to be acceptable in the world i hate okay let's not get into that like whole feminist thing but I think that if I'm gonna do makeup, I want it to be more than this. This is so this is so close to nothing that I'd prefer doing nothing than going through the effort of using this. 
That is just my personal preference. If I want this light of a coverage, which is basically nothing, it is basically no coverage. I don't think that this perfects my skin or evens out. It's so close to nothing that I'd prefer nothing. That's just my take on it. I don't. I do understand why some people would feel like it's just that ever so little close to nothing. Just I get it, but for me, I just prefer nothing instead of going through the hassle of putting on anything on my face. Per personal personal preference. I do have a video where I am ranking my skin tint and my light coverage foundations that I have. Uh, I have a full video on that, ranking the ones I have. I, this one is included because it's new, but if you want to see my taste in those, I do have a video on that if you want to see some more options. I'm gonna put this one here. This is not like a fail. Uh, this is more in the missed opportunity uh, thing. This was released like a month ago in Europe. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how early this was released in Europe. I do have a video on this one, which has quite a lot of views actually. It never ceases to amaze me how interested people actually are in the Urban Decay releases. If you want to see that, I will leave I will leave a link to all the things I'm talking about, including videos where I'm using most of these things because I have videos using most of these things. So in the description box, these won't necessarily be in the order that I'm reviewing them. It will more be in the order that it makes sense for me to put them together so that I can show you the video. So if you want to see me use this one, if you want to see me use this one, I do have videos on basically everything that I'm going to be talking about. This palette isn't bad quality. This isn't a bad palette. This is more a, for me, personally, a missed opportunity palette. I feel like a lot of people were excited in the possibility of Urban Decay doing a special formula palette. If they had actually perfected their shimmer formula a little bit or included just at least one more matte in this one, this could have been a palette that would have been appealing to more people than it will be now. I feel like people that are in love with indie shimmers or are in love with more shifty sh duochrome shades could have loved this palette as well as people that are into the Naked series if they had just pumped up the quality of the shimmers just a little bit more because they say it's a palette full of duochromes but the shifts are so weak that they might just have called it an almost all shimmer palette like if they just cranked it up just a tiny bit more because I'm gonna be honest I really enjoy the Urban Decay mattes and I really don't enjoy the Urban Decay shimmers so if they're gonna do an almost all shimmer palette it, it instantly becomes less interesting I just I was kind of hoping, I was intrigued, I was hoping that they had upped the quality of the shimmers because it is an almost all shimmer palette. I was just hoping that this was going to be good quality shimmers, but it's honestly, it's, it's, a, it's, for me, it's a missed opportunity, but I don't think it's necessarily bad quality or a bad palette. I just feel that it's a little bit dated. Even before it was released, it was a little bit dated and I kind of wish that they would have taken, maybe not a chance with like, or make it like, intense with the naked line but yeah it's, it, it could have been something more and that's just personal opinion I know a lot of people have watched this review and they're like this is exactly what I'm looking for and I totally respect that I'm just this is just me speaking from personal preference I just wish that it had been like just you know kicked up one notch okay I had to get some coffee mm because we still have quite a lot of things to uh, review now I have a new box here, and this box is things that I enjoy, but they're not my absolute favorites. I'm gonna mention this one first. I brought this one when we went on vacation. This is from Pop Beauty, and this is the Face Magnet Primer. It's a mattifying primer that's gonna keep your oils at bay, and also like a face magnet. I think that this is decent. I don't think that this is as mattifying as some other primers. My face tends to get a little oily around here and here when it's very like very hot or when it's very humid. I don't necessarily think that that one, it helped a little with it, but not as much as, for example, the Mattifying Primer by Makeup Forever that I feel that does a really good job at that. And also like a magnet primer, like a gripping primer, I don't think it's nearly as good as the Milk Gripping Primer, for example. So I feel like it's a good budget alternative if you're just battling with it every now and then, or if you want to bring it on vacation like I did. I just don't think that it's like, 
as good as the other options. Of course, this is more affordable though, so it could be a nice way to like to start there. The next thing I'm gonna mention, this is just personal preference. This is just, I don't think that this is bad quality, but it's not for me. It's not for me. I'm probably gonna give this away. Probably should have gave this to my friend Maggie actually, because I sent her a bit of the Juvia's Place brow line and I probably should have sent her this one as well because this one is very dark and this is the reason why I'm not gonna be using it. I'm trying to do my brows a little bit lighter. This one works decent, it does, but then I have three very, very dark shades. If if you have dark shades or if you're a ma working makeup artist, I feel like this could be something. But since it's four shades, they're pretty pigmented though. You could probably just use this. I, I've seen uh, I've seen people of a darker skin tone use this as a contour palette. For me, this doesn't serve a purpose in my collection though. I just wish that I could have something lighter. I'm trying to do my brows a little bit lighter because I am going a little bit more blonder. My brows are naturally pretty dark, so I, I don't think that I'm going to be trying... Oh, is there a fly here? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to try to do like blonde. So I don't think I'm going to try and do like blonde brows, but I also don't... Like, this is just a little bit too dark for me. I don't mind the quality, but all of the brow products from uh, Juvia's Place are pretty dark. So this is just too, too dark for me. It's time to mention the Glossier Concealer. I don't dislike this one. I think it's a decent concealer. I've used, uh, I haven't used it that much. I haven't really dug into it, but I've used it quite a few times. Don't use need that much. I'm wearing it today. It is like a medium coverage pot concealer that is a little bit... I don't want to say greasy, but in lack of a better word, greasy. I need to set it, otherwise it's going to crease on me. I don't think it's a bad concealer. Um, I feel like this is one of those things that I probably could, again, bring for just from going on a sun vacation. This would be a perfect concealer. If I'm not going to be using any foundation, just want to use concealer. But I don't love it. I don't love this concealer as much as I love other concealers. If it's going to be in a pot, um, I don't want it to be this formula. I don't hate it. I really do not hate it. But I also do not love it. And I have had to force myself to reach for this one to be able to review it. So maybe that says, maybe that says something. Uh, the next thing I am going to talk about is the Juvia's Place Sculpt Shade Brow Pencil. This I actually think is not a bad brow pencil. Um, the, it's a very fine tip. It's pretty, it's pretty like waxy. So I feel like this is good if you are the kind of person that likes filling in your brows a bit and you don't want it to be too harsh. I think that it's a really good formula for that. It is not fine enough to be able to do really thin hairs though, which is something that I like to do. Uh, when you want to do that, you need something that's a little bit more pigmented so that you can do like just really easy, easy strokes. You can't really do that with this one. You do have to push a little bit. Uh, but on the other hand, it is a formula that's really good for filling out your brows and not making him too much of a sharpie brow. I prefer something that's a little bit more pigmented because I like doing hair-like strokes and I don't think that this is perfect for that. If you love a brow pencil though, I don't think it's anything wrong with it. Oh yeah, other side. There is a spoolie, which is a really, a really good, like thin spoolie. It's affordable brow pencil, but again, all the shades are pretty dark. This is the lightest color. And yeah, this color does work for me, but it's all of the colors are pretty um pretty dark if I'm if I'm going to be honest. I don't dislike this foundation. This is the Airbrush Flawless Foundation by Charlotte Tilbury, but I also do not love it. Uh this is one of those foundations. I have it in two shades, number 5.5 and 6. I have the 5.5 mixed today with another foundation that I'm going to mention in a minute, and that's how I like this foundation the best. I like it mixed with something that's not as thick, not as creamy. This foundation is very much a full coverage foundation, but unlike another full coverage foundation that I love, which is the Natasha Denona Foundation X, this is more creamy and a little bit more thick, and I feel like I can see it more on my skin. It does crease in my smile lines. It's just a little bit more heavy than I personally prefer. It's not bad. It's not a bad foundation. I think it's a good foundation. It's just not my favorite foundation and I prefer it mixed with something else. And I mean, if I'm really gonna love a foundation, I want to love it as it is. Don't think it's bad. It's just not my, it's just not my favorite. I'm gonna mention this one here. I actually think that this is really good quality. These are the quads by Colourpop. This is the one that I have been trying out. It's the Sorbet one. I heard really good reviews about these quads from Colourpop when they first released. I do have the uh, astrology ones, the zodiac ones in my possession. 
not all of them, but a couple of them. And I have said that I'm gonna do get rid of me trying new makeup, and those are gonna be included. Actually, I actually have the box. Oh, you see, you see this one here. <laughs> That is the box of things that I'm gonna do get ready with me. I just need to get some time I have some things that I need to get out of out of the way this week But I'm gonna film that I've been really impressed with the quality of the squad I do think that this is a pretty color story. It is two shimmers and two mattes a light and a dark and then there's a taupe and neutral one and a peachy one This does turn out pretty mauve red on the eyes It's actually nice and I like a good quad and I think that this packaging I mean it snaps closed, uh, it's not that hard to open. I don't hate this at all. I actually think that the quality of the packaging is really nice and the quality of the eyeshadows are really, really good. Like this is the good uh, Colourpop quality. So I'm, I'm pleased, I'm pleased and I'm happy. This one I did get received in PR. The Juvia's Place things I received in PR as well. Uh, I think I bought all of the other things that I've been talking about so far in this in this selection, but this I got in PR, but I bought the, uh, the other quads myself, so I'm excited to be trying out uh, some more. I want to mention these two palettes. I feel similarly about both of these palettes. These are two neutral palettes that I bought, even I bought both of these. Even though I'm not the biggest lover of neutrals, both of these palettes uh, intrigue me enough enough to want to buy them. This is the Amore and Amalfi by BH Cosmetics. I love BH Cosmetics quality. I probably prefer this one a little bit more over this one. So editor, would you please put this one and then and then this one. <laughs> so this is the Amore and Amalfi. This is a very like a more neutral and slightly warm leaning palette. It has a couple of yellow, gold and oranges and like clay pinks. It's like a brown a mauvey pink, an orangey peach, and a yellowy gold. And what I like about this is that there is yellow matte, a pe two peachy mattes, a couple of like pinky clay mattes, and then some, like there are different options. And this like, this like a mustard yellow matte is really pretty and you can't, it takes the look in a different direction if you don't want to go the typical brown or mauvey pinky route. So I do like the color store of this one. I think the quality of these are good, but they're not as good as the Passion in Paris or the Blueberry Muffin. This one, if I'm, if I'm going to be totally honest with you, it's not that amazing quality. It's good quality, but it's not that like incredible bl blow me away quality. This is the Lust for Dusk. This has a very interesting color store, and I think that this is why I prefer this one a little bit more. This is like a grungy, almost gray tone leaning. It's like they took the saturation and they just put a little gray in it. It's just a very interesting color story. There's a couple of duochromes here. This one that's Miser and this one that is Night Lovers. Miser has been in a palette before. It's not like a super strong duochrome, but you can see there are different like formulas in here. The Miser one actually uh, reminds me a lot about the the one of the more sheer not so shifty duochromes in the urban decay uh, cyber palette and i said that in my vlog when i was using this one that you can get a similar look from this one because you have that matte here but you can from the the urban decay palette it's just this is more affordable it has more matte options and honestly i think this is better quality that's just my personal opinion there is at least one or is it i think it might be two super shock shadows here these are really nice as well this is just a very well-rounded palette if you if you're like me and you're not that much into neutrals this is actually quite interesting neutrals or if you're very much into neutrals and you just want to get some kind of neutrals that are something different. Not the typical like warm neutrals or not the typical like Huda Beauty mauve <laughs> pinky ones. This is a little bit different and that is what I like about this one. And the quality is really nice. Is this going to be my favorite palette that I'm going to reach for again and again and again? No, it's not because I mean neutrals is still not my happy place. But I still think that both of these palettes, I'm going to be honest, are good neutral palettes. Speaking of Huda Beauty, this is the Huda Beauty Wild Jaguar. I like this one a little bit more because it's so sultry and sexy and the shimmers in this one are so good. The shimmers, the matte, these are so good. The only thing that I don't love about this is there is not something that is an inner corner highlight for me. But like you know, I love mixing and matching palettes. So for me, this is going to be a really good companion palette. I love bringing palettes like this. There are small and slightly neutral leaning. You can go pretty purple with this if you're going to be honest. I still think that it's slightly neutral leaning though, even though there is like purples in here. I do have a video where I'm using this one. Again, I will 
I will link everything down below. I think that this is incredibly good quality. The mats are good quality, the shimmers are good quality. These are interesting, dimensional, beautiful shimmers and they are a bit different quality like this is not just a two formula palette some of these shimmers have different formulas when you swatch them when you use them on your eyes some are more topper some are more metallic some are a little bit more sparkly it's a very beautiful and interesting palette and it's pretty unique for being huda because for once there's not a pink matte in here <laughs> she has a tendency of putting a pink matte in everything this one does not have that I think that this is a really good companion palette. Had I been able to change anything, I would have made this a either a lavender, like a lavender pastel matte, or a white matte, just to have the contrast. But I mean, that's just personal preference. I don't use bone color mattes like that, so that's just... That's my, pre that's my preference talking. There is another palette here that I have been using for a bit longer because I wasn't really sure what I thought about it, but I really, really do enjoy it. And I'm gonna put it here. And this is surprising for me too, but this is the NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette. <laughs> this is such a beautiful palette. Like, I feel like NYX did some not so fun palettes some time ago, and I feel like they forever got uh, their name tainted after that, but they are out here doing really really good palettes like look at that Look at those swatches and this is just a very interesting color scheme. I mean this is Dark mattes light mattes dark shimmers light shimmers. It's a green It's a mint lime teal yellow pink neutral moment it's an interesting color story and this is the smaller one this is the ultimate utopia they do have this in a bigger one and also in the five pan palette but i feel like this one it's pretty small it's pretty compact and these are good quality shadows with an interesting color story and i feel like we forgot about nyx i did a video where i used this one which was basically called like what did i name the video nyx are you okay something like that. i don't understand i don't remember what i named it but something along those lines but I like this one a lot. I think this is a really good palette and this this made me realize that NYX did something with their eyeshadow formula because this is a lot better than I remember. Which makes me happy. This is a good quality palette. Out of the brow products that Juvia's Place released, I like the brow gel the most. I actually have two saved here. This is the one that's called medium brown. And again, this is the lightest one. It is medium brown. I wish there was something that was like blonde or something. I really do like this formula. It really makes my brow stay in place and it gives a... Um, like a pretty good color to my brows. I like it coats them, but doesn't make them too clunky or too coated like gunky. I don't like that either. And this is the clear one. This is a really good product. If you were looking for an affordable option at the drugstore, I kind of hope though that they will come up with more shades because it is basically black, blackish brown, dark brown, and medium brown. There is nothing lighter than that. And I mean, there's enough brow products for us that have lighter brows to choose from, definitely. But if there was something that they could ex expand on, it would definitely be adding some more lighter shades, maybe something that's a little bit more on the grayish side. I think a lot of people would enjoy that. I really love the Huda Beauty Lip Contour. This is a really good lip pencil, but it's not my favorite. I love lip pencils. I never, ever, ever do my makeup without doing a lip liner. I I love wearing lip liners. One of the reasons why I like this the most is that this is a twist up, which is something that I really enjoy. And it also is sharpenable. There's a little sharpener at the end. So I feel like it's very good for that reason. The color is beautiful. The color range of this entire line is absolutely stunning. There is literally a nude for everyone. But it is a little bit too smeary for my liking. I like something that is slightly drier. The thing with lip liners, sometimes people are like, oh, it's so easy, it's so creamy. But you lose the, the, the ability to be detailed and precise when it's too creamy. Because I, you want it to be something that you draw in your lips with, to be able to be precise with, something that will keep your lipstick or your lip gloss from fading out. So if it's too close to a lipstick, it kind of loses the purpose. And that is just how I feel about this product. It's just a little bit too smeary for my liking, but I still really love the color. I love the component and I will be using it most definitely. It's just not my absolute favorite formula. The last product is this box is the Wilderness Palette by Beauty Bay. I really like this palette. I really do. I'm actually, yeah, I told you I'm wearing the Beauty Bay formula today. I do think that this is a really good palette, but it's not my 
favorite formula. With this formula, I personally, and this is personal preference, the shimmers do crease on me. I've been wearing this palette for about half an hour. Let me see if I can show you. And you, I think you can see a little bit, I don't know if you can see, but it has creased a little bit in here, and it has creased a little bit in here. It's just a formula, a shimmer formula that creases a little bit on me pretty quickly. This is one of those putty eyeshadow formulas like the shimmers, but unlike other putty formulas that do set down on me, this doesn't 100% set down on me, which makes them crease a little bit. They look beautiful on the eyes, I mean I can just fix the creasing and be, be like pat my finger over it, but I don't love that I have to babysit this formula. Also, the mattes are incredibly pigmented, incredibly blendable, but I don't think they're that buildable. So I have to start with the darkest shadow, which is what I've done today. I started with the darkest shadow and I blended it out with the lighter one. If you do that, they are incredible. Incredible, pigmented, blendable, beautiful. But I don't think that these work as good when you build them on top of each other. Just me personally, I don't get the result that I want if I start with the lightest and build with the darkest. Again, my preference, I know other people think think that they work perfectly like that as well, but it's just depending on what we are expecting from the end result, and I want something that's dark and pigmented and opaque, and I don't feel like I get that if I layer a darker shadow on top of a lighter shadow. I still think it's a great palette, but I'm just telling you that it's not my favorite formula because I don't think that this formula is as versatile as some of my favorite formulas. Okay, now we are getting into the basket of things that I, I really, really, really do recommend. I really do recommend the, uh, the, the Wilderness Palette 2, to be honest. Let's include that one in, in this one as well. It's just not my absolute favorite formula because it does crease a little bit and it doesn't really build. But I mean, you can see the, the result on my eyes today. It, it's just, it's striking. It's just not my absolute favorite. I want to mention this one. I have not done a video on this one. This is the Break the Rules Palette by... Um, it's Belle. It's Belle Cosmetics or it's Belle Makeup? Not 100% sure. I will link this down below. If you're watching my vlog channel, if you're not, maybe you should. <laughs> maybe you should. I will link it down below. I did bring this one when I was going to Italy with my husband and I used it quite a lot of time and this is a, if you are the kind of person that wanted the Urban Decay Naked Cyber to be a palette full of really shiny, sparkly, multi-chrome shades, Maybe this is for you. This isn't like multi-chrome, maybe one of them are or so, but it's a very shifty palette. In different finishes, really beautiful. The only one I haven't used is actually this red one that's called Rebel. This is the only one I haven't used. It is a really, like you can see, it's a really, really pretty red. Wow, that is pretty. It is, this is more of a, a metallic though. This isn't like a duochrome. At least not as what I can see, but it is a very beautiful, like very warm red metallic shade. Super, super beautiful. There are some different formulas in this one, and it's just a very fun, like, addition palette. Personally, I wouldn't use this palette on its own. Actually, I did do that once. I used this shade that's called Just Watch. I just used this one and did some mascara. If you just like those kind of looks, which I do from time to time, obviously, because I used it like that once, I do think that you would really enjoy this palette, though. It is a really fun palette. Some of you have been asking me, like, can I get a palette with only, like, indie makeup shimmers? Maybe this could be an option. Personally, I like a mix, but, like, look at that. That's really pretty. So I do recommend the palette. I personally like a palette that has a mix of shimmers and mattes, but if you just wanted a shimmer palette to add to your collection with lots of, like, special shades. I do think that that one is a really good one. The next one I want to mention, and this one, I really like the quality of this one, but I can't put it higher than this. Although it's a really pretty palette, I really, really like the, the quality of this one, but it's just very mid-tone. It's very mid-tone, but boy, these are the good Colourpop shades. These are good quality, and these are beautiful. Again, it's just doesn't go deep enough for my liking, but the quality is a, it's, Colourpop, they went and did something 2021, their quality has been really good when it comes to eyeshadows, and nobody is happier than me. Super excited about that one. Now we're getting into more Charlotte Tilbury. I overall really enjoy most of the things from Charlotte Tilbury that I've tried. I bought all of them myself, I'm not on the PR list, and this is the Magic Away Liquid Concealer. You can see, 
I've used quite a lot. This is one of those airless pumps. Or like, maybe not, yeah, it's an airless pump because you like twist it and then it comes up. It has one of these whoo, spongy things. I don't mind this. I know some people do. I don't, I don't care. I don't care at all. I don't see the difference between this one and the doe foot that you put in. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I don't see the difference. Uh, people will say, oh, I don't, I don't blend with this one. Yeah, I don't blend with the doe foot either. So for me, there's literally not, I don't see I can't see the difference. I can't see the difference. I don't mind applying with this one. I actually think it's quite easy to apply concealer with something like this. I have mine in shade number five. I will link the video down below where I use Charlotte Tilbury. Really do like this one. Not together with the powder though, but I have realized after using this for quite some time that it is the powder that I don't like. The concealer is really good. It is a high coverage, pretty blendable, beautiful concealer. I think it's really good. It's not my favorite but it's a really good one and I'm definitely going to be using it up. I'm not going to declutter it. Let's just put it like that. Something else that I really like uh, is the Rare Beauty Lip Souffles. I didn't review this together with the other Rare Beauty items that I reviewed last month because at that point I had only used this once and I wanted to use it a couple of more times. This is really beautiful. I don't love the scent of Rare Beauty. It smells like soap, which is, I mean, I love the smell of soap. I just don't want my... Or is it suntan lotion? I'm not sure. It just smells like something that a lip product should smell. It smells nice, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just, it, it, they don't mix lip products with that scent. It's just a little weird. This one doesn't taste anywhere though, like the lip balm did. This one is beautiful. I love this color. I can totally see myself wearing another color. It is a bit of a silicone feel. It reminds me a little bit of the lip clays from Kaleidos, but the lip clays are more opaque than this one. In my, uh, I want to say humble opinion, is it humble-ish, <laughs> humble-ish opinion. I bought this palette to use as like a companion palette and it definitely has been. I have used this palette as a complement to my looks and to other palettes so much since I bought this one. This is the mini Xenon palette. This is a gray black white palette from the Hajinona with one shimmery silver. I bought this one myself. I bought the Rare Beauty and all the uh, Charlotte Tilbury myself as well, but these two palettes were sent to me as PR. Just heads up. I want to be transparent even though even though I'm always pretty I, I'm pretty transparent on my channel, but just so we don't get it twisted. I really enjoy this palette. I think the quality is great. This is a great black to deepen up your looks. This is a great white to lighten up your looks. I just think that all in all, this is a really good palette. Will I be using this palette on its own? Probably not, because I don't usually go for gray looks, but as a companion palette, which is the, how I bought it, it's been, it's been great. I know that this isn't new, like I know, I hear you. This isn't new, this is the Fenty Cheeks Out Cream Bronzer in Macchiato. This is shade number three. I bought this one when I was in Gothenburg with my friend Maggie and I have been using it quite a lot. I really like this one, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't love it as much as the ABH bronzer, which if I'm not mistaken was at the top last month. Don't forget to, to check last month's ranking as well in case you missed it. It's a really good cream bronzer, but right now, if you were looking to buy a cream bronzer, I would recommend the Anastasia one over this one because I think it is slightly better. Just how I feel. This is a really good liquid liner. I love this liquid liner. This is the Natasha Denona Macro Blade Liner. I did get sent this as PR. This is actually a felt tip liner, but this is so pigmented. And this is why this is not at the absolute top. This is the best felt tip liner by far I've ever tried. It is an incredibly pigmented and detailed liner. I don't think this is very beginner friendly though. If you are a beginner with liquid liner, this is not the one I would recommend because it is incredibly pigmented. The second that you put the tip in, you, you get pigment. Like it, 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 it is incredibly, incredibly pigmented. And for that reason, the packaging is so stunning. For that reason, I feel like it is not beginner friendly because this will show any wobbly mistake any kind of insecurities where you don't know where to put the tip, this will show. If you're pretty good with liquid liner and you just want something that is black, opaque, easy to work with, definitely. If you're a beginner, this might not be the one I recommend to you. But I, I'm pretty like, I feel I'm pretty seasoned with liquid liner. I love it. 
But if you're like, I want to get into liquid liner, this isn't the one I'd recommend. <laughs> this just isn't the one I'd recommend. I'm going to be honest with you. It's just very pigmented. Oh, I love Alien Cosmetics so much. Alien Cosmetics is just such a nice brand. I've recent, I've just fallen in love with this brand this past year. And this is the Not Normal palette. <gasps> this color story is a grungy dream. It is a green, purple. It slightly reminds me actually of the NYX palette that I showed you. But I do like this a little bit more because it has more of those greeny shades. I also really enjoy that there are three neutrals at the end here. So you could go neutral if you want to. This like really, really big pants kind of I don't need that, but if you, like, there's so much product in this one, it's more than one gram per pan. I kind of, like, I personally don't, like, need big pans like this. I wish that there were smaller pans, but it is such a good, beautiful, interesting palette. Like, this is a, like, a green duochrome. I think you can see. Like, you see that iridescent green duochrome? Oh, so beautiful. I love Alien Cosmetics. I think this is so beautiful. I do have a video where I'm using that palette. I will link it. I link it down below. This is something I really enjoy. I just wish this came in more shades. This is the Beauty Light Wand in Spotlight. I think this comes in two shades. I'm wearing this today. Comes in a light one, comes in a dark one. I just, I want more. I want more undertones. I want something that's warmer than this, but not darker than this. It doesn't make sense. So I love the formula of this one. So super easy to work with, with your fingers, with the brush, with, with the sponge, with like so easy to work with. Also one of these sponges doesn't bother me at all, but this isn't my perfect shade. And I just wish there were more shades. I do have the Peach Gasm, which is like a blush highlighter hybrid. It's so beautiful. I just, I want more shades. I love this product. But the shade isn't my absolute favorite shade. But it's literally one of the best liquid highlighters that I've ever used in my life. I just am not in love with the shade. I love these products so much, it's not even funny. I think I'm gonna mention these here. I think I'm just gonna mention all of these here. These are my Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. I tried the Hyaluronic Happy Kiss before. I didn't love that formula. It is like a balm, but it was very thick and a little bit sticky on the lips. I didn't like it. I like this one a lot more. This is the, I don't remember the name of this formula, but I will link them down below. These are like sheer lipsticks. These are not as thick and they are like still shiny, but they feel feel more actually like a balm. The other one felt a little bit more sticky. It's in Pillow Talk and in Walk of Shame. And then I have the Stone Rose. This is the Kissing Lipstick, which is the satin formula. Absolutely love it. And then it is the matte formula, which is the matte revolution formula. This is in Walk of No Shame. <sighs> love all of these formulas. They're so good. I have bought one more lipstick since. I always thought like, oh, these like Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks are so hyped, they're so overhyped, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? They're really good. The only one I've tried that I wasn't that impressed with was the Happy Kiss one. I don't think that that one is as good as this because I, again, I don't like sticky makeup. <laughs> don't like sticky makeup, but these, they're all very good. Very impressed. This is the foundation that I used to mix with the other one. I... I've heard some mixed reviews about this one, but I love it. This is the Sephora Best Skin Ever. And as much as I hate the concealer, as much I love the foundation. I have mine in 25N, which is a, I think it's a light medium neutral, if I'm not totally mistaken. It has a pump on it, it's a glass bottle, and this is great. This is also very liquidy, which is something that I love. I love a liquidy formula. This is a medium to full coverage formula. It's very skin-like, very light, very thin, and it has a natural skin-like finish. Really enjoyed this one. I will link the video down below where I'm using it. This is great. And when I use this on camera, I get so many compliments on how good my skin looks. So it not only looks good in real life, it also looks good on camera. And those are the kind of foundations I like, the kind of foundations that looks good everywhere. Okay, top three. Top three, this is the Huda Beauty lipstick. This is such a good formula. I like this even more than I like the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick formula. This is so, the packaging. 
so good. This is in Rasha. This is the cream lipstick. This is the creamy version, not the matte version. This is so great. This is so thin and buildable. It's, is it hmm, sheer to buildable formula? You can go in with just a sheer layer. You can build it up and be, make it become really opaque. Beautiful, sheeny, glossy finish. The color range is stunning. Again, nude for everyone. And I just, it's so comfortable. It's so flattering. It's, it's a stunning formula. Absolutely love this formula. And I might need to get another shade. It's really a pretty formula. If you're looking for a glossy lipstick, I definitely recommend trying this one. It is absolutely stunning. And on the second spot is the new ABH concealer. This is great. This is, this is great. It has a doe foot applicator. It's big, but not too big, as what she said. This color is in color number nine. It is a peachy, it's a medium with a peachy undertone, which is actually working out pretty, pretty good for me. I love this one. I will link the video down below where I'm doing a wear test on this one. It doesn't crease. I can use very little. Uh, it just looks fresh under the eyes. It's just non cakey, but still high coverage high quality concealer that I really, really enjoy. ABH has really been doing some really good products lately. I love the cream range. I love this one. And I'm just very happy to see that they're releasing some really good products. I mean, it's not as hyped as it was before. Who knows? Maybe it never will be. But this concealer, I really enjoy it. Number one. Number one, I can't help it, but I it's such a good palette. It's such a good palette. Okay, so I bought all the things that I showed you now, top five. I bought the Huda, the Anastasia, the Sephora, and the Charlotte Tilbury. I bought them all myself. This one, I did get it as PR. I don't know if I'll ever receive any more PR from Natasha Jona, which is perfectly fine, but I would have bought this myself. No questions asked had I not been given it as PR. I love, you can see my eyelid today, I love berry tone, like warm purples and plummy reds, like I love colors like that so much. This one is what I love. It is going from very light to very dark, both in shimmers and mattes, and this one has so many of my absolute favorite formula, which is the cream to powder. This one's a cream to powder, this one is a cream to powder, this one is a cream to powder, and this one, and might even be this one as well. The best part about the cream to powder is that you can use it as a primer for powder eyeshadow without making your powder eyeshadow go patchy. You can go in with a powder shadow in your crease, then you can go in with a dark cream to powder like this one, you can blend it into your like into your outer corner, and you can go in with this one that in the pan looks like it's going to be like lighter than this one, but this one will act like a deepener up or like a primer and it will make this one look even more intense. So these like cream to powders, they intensify the mattes without making them patchy and you can layer a powder, a cream to powder, a powder, a cream to powder, a powder to make it as deep and as sultry as you want it to be. And that kind of versatility in this palette makes it so it just makes this go as deep as you want it to go. You can make this palette go deeper than what you see here just by layering some of these shadows together because they will just deepen up without being patchy with the cream shadow underneath. And that is just amazing. That is just amazing because I know that some people said that they prefer the melt she's in parties to this one because the melt she's in parties goes deeper than this one, but I can make this one as deep as the melt she's in parties because when I layer this one and then just put this one on top, it becomes really deep and sultry. I have been enjoying working with this so much. This has the perfect amount of neutrals. It has a couple of neutrals, that's all I need. Like, I'm fine with like the couple here. I just really enjoy this palette. It's, it's really good. It has a couple of different shimmers. I think I prefer this one over the Melt Cheese in Parties, which means and that, hmm, okay, let me rephrase that. The Melt She's in Parties is my favorite melt palette. And I do enjoy this one more than that one. And that shows me that I should only buy melt eyeshadows if they are in unique color story. If it's not a unique color story, I might as well just use some other palettes because I'm gonna enjoy, for example, the Natasha Nona formula over that one. 
it taught me something. It taught me something. But yeah, this is a beautiful palette. Like I said, I did get it in PR. Had I not gotten in PR, I would have bought it myself. I mean, since this, they released the Mini Metropolis, and I have bought that one. And if all, if the postal gods are with me, that video should already be up with me trying the Mini Metropolis because it says it's being delivered before this video is going up. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. If you had been eyeing this one. I'm not gonna say like, oh, go and buy it because it is expensive. I think it's $65, these, uh, this midi palettes. This is not the $129 uh, palette, but it is a beautiful palette. If you like these tones and you don't have th something similar to that in your collection, I do recommend it. And do play around with those cream to powders, layering powders on top of them because you can make your looks super dramatic super dramatic anyways i'm gonna go wash my hands thank you so much for being here thank you so much for enjoying this little ranking with me which wasn't a little ranking this was a big ranking <laughs> this was a big ranking let me know if you agree with my ranking let me know if you had any favorites from last month that you think that i maybe should be trying even though i will say i am planning to buy uh, not as much makeup for the rest of uh, october that is my plan I'm, I'm doing what i did in july where i didn't shop anything for half of the month I'm trying to not shop anything for the rest of October. So let's see if, let's see in the monthly haul if I ended up um, doing that or not. But thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you again, maybe actually tomorrow for a new video. There might be a bonus video tomorrow as well. We'll see how that ends up. Otherwise, I will see you on Monday.